Welcome to day two of the 2012 Rally Sweden. The world's best may be taking on snow and ice, but these forest stages are some of the fastest on the WRC calendar. Speeds in excess of 220 kilometers an hour in temperatures approaching 30 degrees below freezing. This is the ultimate winter test for both man and machine. It was an action-packed first day here in Sweden, and as expected, the treacherous driving conditions kept the drivers on their toes. The Guinea Novikov very nearly overstepped the mark on stage six, while Swedish star Patrick Sandell also got lucky. Estonia's Oitanak didn't look comfortable on the white stuff, and he too had a moment to reflect on his actions mid-stage. Those three got away with it, others were not so lucky. Finland's Jali Ketemar had a frustrating day one in Sweden, and it eventually came to an end with the car stuck in a snowbank. Swedish touring car star Richard the lower runner struggling in the snow. Danny Sordo paid a visit to a snowbank. The ensuing damage was terminal, and the Spaniard pulled over and joined the retirement list. The biggest news of the day, however, arrived when world champion Sebastian Loeb did battle with a snowbank and lost. His Citroen was stuck fast, and the Frenchman had to rely on some local help to get him back on the road. It cost him two minutes in the recovery, and Sebastian ended the day down in seventh and out of the running. While others succumbed to the frozen forests up at the front, a battle royale was emerging, and unsurprisingly, it was locked out with Scandinavian drivers. Norway's Mads Osberg began the day well, taking an early lead, but setup problems meant he dropped off the pace to end the day fourth. His fellow countryman, Petter Solberg, was also battling for the lead. But this slip-up cost him dear. The Norwegian just got slightly offline and slid wide. 12 seconds were lost. And that left two Finnish stars and former teammates Mikko Hirvonen, now at Citroen, and Jari Matti Latvala at Ford. Neither driver wanted to lose face, and both were out to prove their car was quicker. Maximum attack was the only answer, and over the course of the day, the lead changed hands three times. Cue the final stage, and with the gravel starting to appear on the road, Hirvonen's Michelin snow tyres deteriorated quickly. Latvala had managed his better, and with that, the overnight lead went the way of Ford and Yari Natty. That late frustration for him and saw Latvala pull out the gap out front to 16.8 seconds, with Petter Solberg just 1.8 behind second place. Sebastian Loeb down in seventh. Day two sees the cars leave Norway behind and head back to the traditional Swedish stages. Eight lay ahead, including two runs of the Vargosen stage, which takes in the famous Collins Crest jump. In total, 118 kilometers of competitive action. We also see the return of the reverse running order system to remove any disadvantage to the overnight leader for being first on the road. So once again, Brazilian Paulo Nobre leads the pack away, followed by the restarting Richard Gorenson and Oit Tanak. But we have to look towards the bottom of the running order to find our leaders. Osberg goes 17th, followed by Solberg, Hirvonen and Latvala. It's back out to the traditional roads in Sweden's Varmland region for some of this event's classic stages. None more so than the legendary Vargosen, the site for one of the WRC's most iconic arenas at Collins Crest. Named after Scottish rally royalty Colin McRae, the fans are out in force. Oitanak, at just 24 years old, is one of the rising stars of the WRC, but his second attempt at Rally Sweden is becoming one to forget. Fighting back from a day one off, though, Tanak is again displaying his typically aggressive style. He's certainly up to speed, and here comes Collins Crest. A huge jump from the Estonian. Ivan Brynildsson is one of a number of young drivers making their WRC debuts this weekend, and he has certainly impressed, running in 10th at the moment. Oh, and the Norwegian not holding back there either. Back at the start line is eight-time world champion Sebastian Loeb. The Citroen Spike Michelin's biting into the snow. Incredible acceleration for these cars despite the ice. As has often been the case in recent years, though, the greatest rally driver of them all has been unable to master the frozen forests. Fighting back from a day one off, he starts down in seventh. For now, though, Loeb is being held at bay by Henning Solberg, the Norwegian veteran, knows a thing or two about winter rallying, and he will not give up on sixth place without a fight. Six red minus half long, keep in. 70, six left, oops. 
Russian youngster Evgeny Novikov has made a career of driving up to and over the limit. With one of the most experienced co-drivers in the sport alongside him, though the M Sport driver has come somewhat recently. Will Denis Jurade be able to rein Evgeny in over Collins Crest? Well, a fairly reserved effort. Novikov and Jurade remain in a comfortable fifth. It will take some catching the four Scandinavians leading the field, though. Mats Osberg led briefly on day one, but has gradually drifted away from the fight at the front since. Angered by a pre-stage puncture, it's an aggressive display from the Norwegian youngster in Vargosen. Quickest so far, it's been some drive from Mats. And that angry drive from Osberg will apply a bit of pressure on fellow Norwegian Petter Solberg, who started the stage just under 14 seconds ahead. The constant grip changes in Vargosen this year are affecting a number of drivers, all important rhythm. And worryingly, Petter seems to be suffering more than most. He's almost five seconds slower than Osberg. Nice and controlled over the crest, though. With Solberg's pace fading slightly, it allows Mikko Hirvonen to focus his attentions on chasing down the rally leader. After losing time to Latvala late in day one, the Citroen Total driver has almost 17 seconds to make up, and the two-time Sweden winner is on the attack. With Latvala focused and ready on the start line, the Battle of the Finns is about to resume. Here we go then, the former teammates and compatriots are both desperate for this victory. They are the best in the world on these roads on current form and neither is willing to give an inch. Ford man Latvala like here and is right on the edge. And closing on the split time after 6.28 kilometers, we'll soon find out who's made the best start. Oh, he's slower. Round one to Miko. But can Yari fight back? The Citroen DS3 was well suited to the tighter, more technical early kilometers. It clearly helped here. And let's wait for his reception over Collins Crest. I'm sure there's a few Finns out there in the forest. The spectators are loving this battle, and well, they might. Nico and co-driver Yamo Leighton and keep the hammer down through the final few kilometers. Stage cleared, but does he think it's been enough? I tried to push really hard, but obviously, uh, you know, he gets even more splits and definitely he's fighting back. But I'll try. I'll really try to keep pressure on him and, uh, you know, go as fast as I can. Well, Miko, not sounding too confident there. Has he lost some momentum, perhaps? Back with Latvala. Here comes Collins Crest. A nice tidy leap. The stage does open out a lot over the last few sectors. It may have suited Yari's natural driving style more. The Fiesta being thrown through the final few bends into the flying finish. Now he may actually beat Miko here. Yes, an impressive fight back from Latvala, and he takes the first stage win of day two. It looked like in the beginning of the stage, Miko was already two seconds ahead of me, so. So slightly stressed on that moment, uh, but it's a part of the stage I had never driven very well uh, on that uh, first 10 kilometers, very twisty. It's always going very bad for me, but after that I find a good rhythm on the on the fast wider road. So Yari pulls another couple of seconds ahead of Miko, and behind the Finns, the battle of the Norwegians has closed up as well. Osberg is now within nine seconds of Petter Solberg. Quite a start to day two here in Sweden. Latvala and Kievenen are at it again. Join us after the break. This fight has only just begun. Welcome back to the Varmland region of Sweden with Ford's Jari-Matti Latvala leading the way. We now move on to another pair of Swedish rally classics, Sorgen and Fredericksburg. It's been an eventful weekend so far for Oit Tanak. He's been getting well acquainted with the Swedish snowbanks. And this is a learning year for Oit in the WRC car, of course. 
Oh, not again. And this is becoming a rather familiar sensation for the Estonian, the Fiesta, well and truly beached once again. Sebastian Loeb suffered a similar incident yesterday, but the world champion has been powering his way back up the leaderboard. It's been an impressive fight back so far. He's pushing really hard. Oh, perhaps too hard. That's a spin for the Citroen driver. If you needed proof that Seb is on it, there it is. A quick recovery, but that's more time lost for the Frenchman. Yevgeny Novikov remains in a comfortable fifth position and again displaying his newfound maturity. Despite a misted up windscreen distracting him briefly, the Russian's impressive pace continues. Petr Solberg lost time with a stall at the start of stage 12 and it could prove to be costly. Massive jump there, but remember, he is embroiled in a battle with fellow countryman Mads Osberg for that final podium position, and that stall will not have helped his cause. <laughs> Running ahead of Petter on the road is Czech driver Martin Prokop. He's the first man to admit that snow is not his favoured surface. Martin just keeping out of trouble this weekend, but still running in the points positions in ninth. Back to the battle at the front, and Mikko Hirvonen is the man leading the charge for the Citroën team. You see here why these roads are some of the quickest on the calendar. Mikko looking neat and tidy through this spectacular sequence of crests. This is not just about who's the quickest, it's increasingly about who wants it the most. But I, I really love it. Really good have a, you know, nice to have a good fight and, and be able to go fight with with new cars as well. So I'm very pleased even for this, but for sure I wanna, you know, try to take some time out of him and put some pressure on him. So uh, and it's good, it's good. Joining our rally leader now, just look at these stunning shots from our heli cam alongside the lake in Fredericksburg. Yari is running behind Mikko on the road today, but he can't afford to ease off. He's leading the charge for Ford, and like Mikko, is desperate to outpace his former teammate. Yari perhaps not looking quite as tidy as the Citroen driver. As he comes towards the end of the stage, keep an eye on the clock. And he is slower than Mikko by 1.9 seconds. His advantage chopped to just 18. Mikko was doing a very good set. I didn't, I didn't have a comfortable feeling at all. It felt, felt very, very slippy and uh, difficult to get the grip on this stage. So I took it a bit, bit too steady. Uh, I know at the beginning of the stage I need to improve. A quick blast through the 1.9 kilometer Hagforce sprint stage follows. It's another treat for the Swedish fans to get a close up view of the action. And it is a memorable moment for Oit Tanak, the young Estonian claiming his first ever WRC stage win. However, after losing 20 minutes in that snowbank earlier, he's still a long way adrift of the top 10. Latvala pulled out another six tenths of a second on here than an in Hag force, and Petter Solberg edged slightly further away from Osberg. Further back, that spin means Loeb is still stuck in seventh behind Henning Solberg. A short drive to the service park at Hagforce Airport follows, and a respite for the two men fighting for victory. Now, you've been teammates with Mikko for a long time. I mean, have you thought about what's going on inside his head? A bit of psychological warfare? It is a, it's a little bit of a mental game between the stages. Uh, we talk, but it's it's more serious than earlier when we were teammates. So you don't talk, talk about the, the setup changes anymore. I, I really try to stitch him up on uh, between the stages, but uh, but you know he's getting older and more experienced as well, so it's not so easy anymore. Because you know Ford inside and out. I mean, really, you must have an edge. Well, I'll, let's see. I'll try to do something. But like I said, you know they are. He's been very consistent in the last, uh, especially end of last year. So uh, it's not so easy anymore to to make him nervous. Something that Rally Sweden has always had in abundance are fans. They travel from all over the Scandinavian countries to line the forest stages with their fellow WRC supporters and take in the rally atmosphere. 
These guys don't need music to have a party, a snow-filled forest and some rally cars jumping through the air is all that's required. And it's at the infamous Collins Crest Jump in Vargosen that each year thousands of fans flock to celebrate the WRC. We have uh, been here uh, from uh, yesterday and we've in our uh, tent. It's not just the snow and fast flowing stages that make Rally Sweden so special. The loyalty of the Scandinavian supporters makes this round of the WRC unmissable. <laughs> Very icy. I see, I see. So the fans ready and waiting for the second pass over Collins Crest. But one driver who's really struggled to make it to them is Armindo Arrojo. Seven minutes late out of service after changing his exhaust manifold. That is still a very sick sounding Mini. Back in the stage, another Mini driver is fast approaching. And the fans will certainly be looking forward to seeing this man, local hero Patrick Sandell. And the former junior champion is going to catch a Rojo's ailing car. Well, the Portuguese driver being very sportsmanlike, driving his car off the road to allow Sandell pass. The Swedish star's eighth position is safe for now. I, I really like this stage, second time through. Much better rhythm all the time, but I... Lost maybe five seconds because Armindo was parked in the middle of the road after he went off. But when he, I came, he went down in the ditch again. So I thank you for that. <laughs> Ahead of Sandell on the leaderboard, Sebastian Loeb amazingly continues to languish down in seventh. Finally, though, there is a sign of life from the imperious Frenchman in this second pass through Vargosen. He takes 11 and a half seconds out of Henning Solberg's advantage. Started okay. I've done a, a good stage. It's hard for the tyre, uh, so we'll have to take care about it, uh, to look and to do the right uh, changes because uh, it will be very hard for the studs until the end of the day. So concern from Loeb about tyre wear, it was an issue that a number of drivers struggled with on the first afternoon, a possible worry for Petter Solberg also as he continues to push. Whoa, he kept his foot hard to the floor there to power out of that slide. And spectacular stuff from Petter over Collins Crest too, but once again, he's slower than Osberg. Back at the fight at the front and Latvala's on the attack again after the split time at 11 kilometers. He's up by 3.3 seconds ahead in the stage. Kievanen is also on the absolute limit. An incredible view from above displaying how skillfully the Citroen man slides the car from corner to corner using all of the road. And he flies over Collins Crest one more time. Stage cleared for Miko. Yeah, I need to send regards to Cedric, my engineer. Car was absolutely perfect, so uh, worked really well. And I tried to be sensible with the tires as well. So Yarimati might win me a little bit on this one, but let's see overall how it's going to go. A confident sounding Miko, despite the early surge from Latvala in here. The rally leader is fast approaching Collins Crest. So one last chance for the fans camped out there to cheer him on. <laughs> Tidy landing from Yari in his time. is just one tenth of a second quicker. So little change in the overall standings. Here, but remains just under 19 seconds behind Latvala in the fight for third. Osberg continues to edge closer and closer to Petter Solberg. Kievanen has three more stages to find a way of catching the leader. They're coming up after the break and we'll also bring you right up to date with the SWRC competition. Welcome back to the frozen forests of Sweden, the playground of the WRC this weekend. But this famous event is also hosting the second round of the Super 2000 category. A chance now to get you up to date. The SWRC has so far been dominated by local star PG Anderson. The Proton Satria Neo has been flying through the roads of his homeland this weekend. And despite a few setup issues today, PG looks almost unstoppable at the moment. 
Craig Breen has been doing his best to chase down the leader. Terrific commitment over Collins Crest earlier there from the Irishman. With Anderson struggling slightly in the morning, Breen was able to claim a couple of stage wins, but he's still a long way adrift in second. In third place, local wildcard entrant Pontus Tiedemann has also been in stage winning form. A bit of understeer aside, it's been another strong day for the man in third. For Alastair McCray, meanwhile, there was an emotional return to the crest, so famously named after his brother Colin. It's been a disappointing return to Sweden after an eight-year absence, already running under the Rally 2 restart rules. It's been a frustrating day for the Scot. McCray is currently down in sixth, but up front, Anderson's lead still stands at well over two minutes, with Breen in a comfortable second place and Tiedemann in the final podium position. Back to the big boys now for the final two forest stages. And it has again been a disappointing day in the Swedish forests for eight-time world champion Sebastian Loeb. There is finally progress for the Citroen Total man in stage 16 when he overhauls Henning Solberg to claim sixth. But again, his luck doesn't last long. After hitting a rock, a puncture towards the end of the final forest stage in the dusk costs him another 14 seconds. Did you hit anything? No, I, yes, I stone on the road, but in the line. So I couldn't do anything, I didn't see it. Just when you get a position, you kind of start to have problems. Every time you move up, you go back down. Yeah. Peter Solberg has also failed to make the impact he had hoped for on this second day. After adjusting his setup to be closer to his teammate Latvalislo, the Norwegian's pace immediately improves with a second fastest time in stage 60. Mats Osberg's valiant pursuit of Solberg wasn't held up for long though. Despite his Fiesta switching to launch mode mid-stage briefly, he immediately closed up again on his compatriot. This battle for third looks set to go down to the wire. As does the fight for top honours for the latest Rally Sweden victory. As expected, tyre conservation strategies played a big part on the second loop with Latvala not too concerned about the necessity of sharp studs later in the day. He goes for it on the penultimate forest stage, beating Hirvonen by a massive five seconds. <laughs> the Citroen man had in part lost the time in an effort to conserve his own studs for the second pass through Fredericksburg, and it did have an effect. In the gathering gloom in the final proper stage of the day, Miko claws back 2.6 seconds by setting the fastest time, but overall it had made little impact. You've run kind of a different strategy to Yari Mati on the tyres, has it worked? Well, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I know my tyres are completely shagged at the moment. I don't. I don't have any, any stats left, but we'll see if it, if it works out. And OK, we still have one short stage to go, which is very icy and, you know, it can be very tricky over there. After another pass through the Hack 4 sprint, Lavala's lead stands at 23 seconds, while Solberg's advantage over Osberg is just over 11. Loeb's managed to hold on to sixth despite his late puncture, but is the leader's advantage enough to hold on for the win? Are you going to go maximum attack or are you going to think about second in the points for the championship? No, not, not yet. So I'll, I'll still go flat out, especially in the morning and, and see if we can maybe rattle Yari Matti a little bit. And, you know, it's only a small mistake for him and then we are right up there. So uh, I'm still going to push. Now, of course, Mikko wants to win and he's going to attack in the morning to see what is my, my pace. And uh, so I, I, can't, I can't start to back off. I, ha I really need to keep going as I have done today. And what about the championship, though? If you're really fighting for victory tomorrow, you've also got to think longer term for the rest of the year, though. You don't want to roll the car up into a ball, do you? No, no, it's, you really need to think about the championship. It's, but uh, when, if I can carry on like I have done today, then it should be, hopefully, hopefully it would be enough. 
and I have a little bit now more margin than yesterday, yesterday evening. So um, gives a little bit more more confidence for tomorrow. But for sure, I need to be really wake up from the first stage on. The victory is still up for grabs here in Sweden then. It looks like a Finn is going to win, but will it be Latvala or will it be Hirvonen? You'll have to join us tomorrow for the final day's highlights to find out.